Hey guys, Sean coming at you today with another build. This time we'll be working on the Saurus Warriors from the Seraphon Star Collecting Box. Now this is actually a really good value box. I wish I'd known about it sooner. Um, the Carnosaur in it is itself worth the box. But then you're also getting 12 more Saurus Warriors. I think 5 to 6 Saurus Knights. So it's a really great value. If you're looking to start a Seraphon army, a lot of, actually any Warhammer army, be it Sigmar, 40k, uh, generally the star collecting boxes are a good deal. At least they try to make them. So we'll be doing these Source Warriors. I have that. I mean, a little guide sheet out. They're relatively simple to build, but um, you know, it's always good to have that list out. Now, I'm going to do some conversions as well, I think. I kind of want my leader to be a pale one. I'm going with that pale one themed army where my guys are led by these um, albino warriors. And my guy, I want to think I want to trade a little for conversions here. So I'll cut everything out assemble, but then my leaders I'll focus special attention on for you guys so you can see how I kind of work my conversions or how I make them more exciting. And uh, I think I want like a dual wielding warrior has because they get extra attacks anyway, so why not kind of show on the model? Why would he get extra attacks? Because he's got two of those uh, mace slash sword axe things he's got going on, the Aztec -y clubs. So I want to kind of show that in the model itself. To make it really cool and I think we're gonna build only one of the banner guys and I don't really want to do a drum guy I will think I'll think about it but we'll see so we're gonna start working on the miniatures I'm gonna cut and basically I'll show the screws now so they're pretty similar get the spears get the clubs and I think it's like actually it's like repeat repeat and repeat yes they are all repeats Repeat, 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 which is fine. These are meant to be your generic, generic unit. So you're going to have a lot of these re-repeating. Oh, flip it over one more time. There we go. So now, see, everything's lined up. So I do have two of these start collecting boxes. So I think these guys will have the spears, whereas my second unit will have, like, the clubs and axes. Well, actually, no, we'll go. Well, actually, no, we'll do the clubs and axes today because I told you I want to make that dual wielding warrior. I got to figure out what I want to do for the leader of the spear guys. So, we're going to get to that building the source warriors. And when we build, guys, it's best to have the proper tools. I have my Citadel Clippers. Again, there's other versions like Army, Army Painter has lots of cool hobby and tools. I have a needle file I got for like three bucks. It's not this one was three bucks, like a whole pack was three bucks. I got this one's a flatter edge. I was doing one with a rounded edge and it wasn't working out as well as I want. Scalpel, exacto, I got some blades to see if use them wear, a little bit dull down, but it's good for scraping on those edges. And that's about it. And we're gonna start working on these guys. I'm gonna cut them out and work on them. So something I just noticed real quick with the start collecting box is that Normally these have numbers associated with them. You'll see like little numbers along the edges. And on either side, there are no numbers. And I realize that because every model is basically the same except for head variation and weapon variation. So if you're a little confused going through, oh well what piece goes to what? You know, hey, left arm goes here, right arm goes here, uh head goes here, um and things like that. And if if you don't know the basic anatomy at this point. I can't help you on that, but left and right, there's there will be people who can help you out. I learned in basic training what left and right is. I'm joking. I knew before, but you know, they reinforce that very much so. So I just want to kind of show that, hey, this is a little bit different than normal bo normal uh, assemblies. This one does not have numbers. All right, so I have most of the stuff cut out now. Uh, I haven't done any shaving down yet or anything. So I wanted to show hey, there's some pieces still left on the so push everything together. I'm building a plan in my head, so let's see like how much I still have left. You know, they don't they give you a good bit of options. And if you also notice too, um, I have here a left and right arm. One has the like drumstick, but we are going to be using this one for the conversions, and I'm going to show you how by introducing you to something that I recommend any new Warhammer, 
any mini wargaming hobbyist should do. That concept, it will get a lot of shine in there, is a bits box. This is uh, something I had from a long ago, so, uh, they were called Lizardmen back in the day, it's still the same kind of units, box of leftover pieces. You see a bunch of heads and swords and all that. I'll be using that to do my conversion to make that leader that much cooler. So when you have all these extra pieces, don't just throw them away. Save them, and you can use them like to convert anything. And a lot of these are intercha not interchangeable. With a little bit of green stuff, a little bit of ingenuity and glue, you can make any unit you kind of want. I, uh, I have some Kroot. It's on my Instagram. That actually, I use these bits and boxes to make Kroot with like like lizardmen spears and swords so they were more of like a not just gun wielding crew but like very like savage primal and like I have some snakes in, in here that make them look real cool so don't like I really recommend you always save a bunch of bits like I got this box from like a old Warhammer thing you can find any jewelry boxes for cheap at Walmart just to collect them you can organize them right on what you want but it's really a good idea to save this stuff up I highly recommend it'll save you money, um, be able to customize things, and like, you know, hey, I might not be able to assemble a whole guy, I just need a body, so maybe you can just buy a body from eBay or something. So here, I'm going to start the process of shaving everything down, I'm going to kind of set up each warrior in a line to show you how I'm going to build them. Alright, so I have the arms picked out, I want to show you the really easy conversions. So, like I said, I have a bits box from a long time ago. So what I'm going to do real quick, I have this mace, or drumstick. I'm going to go into my clippers, clip it, get rid of drumstick. Then we're going to take our file, sand it down a little bit, get a flat surface. And it might look a little weird, but it's not going to look too bad. Especially when you paint it, a lot of that stuff goes away. You take one of our extra sword things, we want to get below that hilt because we still want to see the hilt. So I'm going to cut into that hand here a bit. Bam. You know. And I mean, I'll, you know what? I didn't show you guys. Let me try that one more time. Old. This is actually an older. Hilt's a lot smaller on this one. Notice that hilt is a lot smaller. It's okay though. Still in there. And cut right below the area. So you can see that hilt. Now we're going to sand that edge around. Make sure nice and smooth. That's extra pieces right there. There we go. Alright, extra piece go away. There we go. Sand it down. So now, flat on flat. Bam, we have a new sword, and it's going to be the other arm. And that's really simple conversion, but it's going to make this model look much more unique when compared to the rest of the models. So don't be discouraged, but try new things. Alright, so now that we cut it off, we have to glue it. Now I have my plastic glue, which is the best, because we want this to make a very secure bond. So we're going to basically melt the plastic to the plastic. Get a little dollop on there. Not too much. See how that sword, so let's aim it so the sword points are pointing the right way that I want. Alright, so we got that guy right there. So we're going to line that. So, yep, let's get the same. Line up, let's put that on top. Smush it down. And there you go. You have a new left, well, let me see. Yeah, left handed sword. So this guy is going to be dual wielding. And that's kind of how the idea I wanted to make him a bit more special and unique. So, what I'm going to do, take my little citadel grabber claws, grab the base of this arm here. And it's going to be kind of hard for you guys to tell, but see, it's pointing straight at you. So, I want to straight up and down. There we go, straight up and down. Do that, because what I want is that glue. I don't want it to lean or anything like that. I want it to set 
straw on straight up and down. So I'm going to leave that to the side. And we'll do a quick build of one of the basic guys here. So that way you guys see what basically what I'm working with. So a little dollop of that in the leg. Put the leg in, press it in, and we want these pieces to meet. Uh, there we go. Oh, man, sorry. That's out of camera. Just want these pieces to meet, just like that. So, like I said, it, there's no numbers or instructions. Oh, goodness gracious. Numbers and instructions, but they make it relatively simple for you to assemble these. Huh, it's not going in, so maybe let me take a, I will take a look at the instructions to make sure I'm doing the right thing. So maybe this does, because normally it's used to, like, you know, that's how they would fit. They would go below, that pops it out every time I do it. So let's see. So, I'm going off my old knowledge. These pieces get cut off. <laughs> the ones I keep poking out. So, you guys will get one more cutting video, or cutting part. Get right in there and oh, oh, go flying. Always make. I actually have an apron now because I've lost so many pieces. And this actually, oh, and I dropped my tools, which you don't want to do because you don't want to bend or break them. So there we go. Now you guys' feet. Let's stand his feet down in the back a little bit. So we'll push his leg in, and I actually have a base here, so what we want to do is kind of press it against the base, so that way we can see how well it fits. That base seems real big, but I don't know. So, ta so push it down, that's where the leg wants to fit, so push it back a little bit more, there we go. So that's where it wants to be, we're going to let that push that in a little bit and let that sit. Alright, I'm going to glue that head a little bit dull a bit. Right. Come on, come on. There we go. A little dull right there. Pull that head out. Push it on. Alright, so something I'm noticing, I'm actually going to wipe this off real quick. So, wipe it off. Wipe it off, because the head is not exactly fitting, and that a little disconcerting. It's fitting a little bit, but I'm going to shave that down right there. So let's try the head again. See, it should fit. So I think I need to shave actually at the bottom of this guy's head. Make his stuff fit a little better. So sharing. Sometimes you kind of gotta do this. Maybe the model itself wasn't made right, or maybe you messed up. Mm. I'm more likely to be the culprit in this case. Hmm. See, I don't like the how that has a gap there. So I'm gonna come back to you with how I'm gonna fix this. So the easiest way to fix it is just to glue it. Get some of that glue out. Oh, it's testing me. There we go. Get some of that glue in there. Let me make a little bit more than usual. So we really want to melt that plastic now. So glue it and then push it on there. And it's going to be touching the back spine, but that's okay. These guys are baseline, battle line, warrior. I'm going to put effort into them, but when you paint, when you paint battle line. I'm not saying don't put detail, don't don't mix it up, but like, hey, you wanna? There's a lot of these guys, and it can get very tedious and tiresome if you are building so many to the point you just it becomes unfun. So now we got the head. A little dot there. Put it sword on, just like that. Bow. Push it in there so I don't get that seam line at the arm. 
One more dot. In there. Push them there. So now what you're not going to see me do though today is glue on his shield. Because the shield will go on like that. I'm gonna put on like that. Oh, no, no. Would go on. Oh no, all the pieces are a little bit loose, so I don't want to mess with. Go on like that, and that obscures a lot of that model and makes it harder for me to paint. So right now we're just gonna leave it unglued. Let's get the arms where we want them, so they're nice and pretty. Push that head back in because it's deciding that it doesn't want to stay. This line from uh, Happy Gilmore. You're too good for your home. <laughs> push it in, push it in. Making that plastic really melt. Alright. And so basically, as a completed Saurus Warrior. I'm going to let him dry. Since he was in. And I'm going to come back. Assemble some more. And I'm gonna, we'll go through the assembly of the leader together. And how I'm going to make him special. Alright, so we're about to start building our Alpha Talon, which is the leader. And as you can, I'm going to take show you the sword, you can barely tell, maybe a little bit tell, that it's glued together. And that's, it's just nice that these conversions really work really well. So let's get this guy's arms on. Little dot right there. That's his main arm, it's kind of like pointing out, and that angry roar. I'm going to get you. So, as I'm building these guys, um, another reason why, uh, that's not the shot, sorry. Another reason why I wanted to build this battle line is it's getting closer to when Warcry is a, it's kind of like a skirmish mode arena version of Age of Sigmar. It's already released, it's in 2019, like, General's Hand Guide. And it included some new campaigns for a bunch of new factions, like the Seraphon. Well, dynamic, so I'm going to push that arm up a little bit like that. Make it look real dynamic. So, I figure I'm going to want some Source Warriors. I have the Skinks. I have an Old Blood. I don't know what else is going to be involved in the War Cry. So look at that. Very dynamic already. Very unique compared to, like, the basic guy. He's rawr, I'm coming at you. And this guy's like bloodthirsty, gonna hack you up to dice you. Make sure the Chaos Gods have nothing left to spare, you know, to salvage. <laughs> so again, Warcry is coming out. Uh, for well, Seraphon, I'm coming for Warcry. And I want to make sure I have some, like, basic guys in there. Before I have to, like, you know, find out what else is coming. So, well, we let those arms dry. I don't want to really focus on the head too much. Let's start on that leg part. The leg in there. Get my base and I put it down. There we go. So that way we have like the good, the good spacing. There we go. Push it, push that leg in, space it out. Perfect. This guy, I mean, he's definitely supposed to have a shield. I could still put it on there. I guess I'm thinking. Well, I mean, I won't do it now. Obviously, I do the same thing. I would wait. But I'm thinking, make maybe put it on his back. Nah, or on his side. Mm, maybe. Or just leave him like he is. Have his and have his shield on the base of it. So it's like, hey, he dropped his shield. And he's going bloodthirsty. So now we'll do the head a little bit. A little bit of that right there. There we go. And I chose this like roaring head, like rah, coming at you. There's some other heads. I had some old like guard or temple guard heads that had like co like crowns on them, which I might do for the leader of the spearmen. But for this guy, I want him yelling or roaring. Cause he's the one coming at the chaos warriors full force, or, or any any enemy. But I particularly don't like chaos. They well, and Seraphon really don't. I particularly don't as well. Nothing like, not like they're oh they they suck, but like oh they're evil. They're like evil incarnate, like literally. Put that shoulder pad on him. 
Because again, he's our unique guy. We want him to look unique. So I've done a little bit more than I used to. So I'm going to put this shoulder pad on him. He's not a full temple guard, like decked out armor. But hey, he's going to be unique. I did two different shoulder pads that really make it stand out. So, that was a quick and easy Alpha Talon. Slight conversion to show you that, hey, it's done. You know, he's dual wielded. It's definitely going to be a different look for your army. And that way, your battle line can be a lot of homogenized troops. But like one or two is going to be going to draw your eye, which is kind of what you want. You want to have some that, like, stand out among the crowds. So that way you can, like, oh, whoa, well, look at that model. So it kind of represents the rest of the force. So... Thank you all for joining me. I wanted to really show you this conversion and how I, you know, kind of add a little more flavor and a little more personality to my models. Because I do like to convert things. Like my slant has that headdress that was from another piece of set. Um, and I'm working on other things as well. But like just, just slowly add to it. Don't start, don't go crazy and like make a whole new model. But make it where you want to look. It look good. So thank you all for joining me. I hope you have a great day. Like and subscribe if you want to see more. Comment if you want to say, hey, I've done this conversions. Or, hey, that's a little, maybe that's out of standard or something. Hey, that's illegal. <laughs> uh, check out my Instagram too if you want to see more paintings that I've, painting of models I put up. Have a great day, y'all.